next up, we're going to talk about patch antenna. So let's review a little bit about our lectures. But I'd like to ask you to look at the lecture notes mainly here. It's just a quick review. So patch antenna, we have a dielectric substrate. And on the dielectric substrate, we have a patch. So this is essentially a metallic patch. In our case, or perfect electric conductor, this is my substrate, epsilon r. Usually the value of the substrate is in the range of permittivity of 2 and something till 10. That's the typical value. So, uh, so this is the top view of the patch. So let me just write the top view. And from the side view, this is my substrate. So I'm just going to write epsilon r. This is the side view of the metallic patch that I have. This is the PEC. So that's this metallic patch. And also, behind this dielectric substrate, I have my ground plane. So that's another metal or perfect electric conductor in the back. So this is essentially the structure that I have. This is the top view. Now, if you remember from the course, usually uh, one way to fit this structure is to bring a coaxial cable, and the inner conductor would be soldered here. And that's essentially going to excite this structure. And it's a little bit offset because if you remember, uh, if we excited at the edge, it's very difficult uh, to match it to 50 ohm. This is a 50 ohm. And here we, I have a very large impedance. And the reason is at this point, so at the edge, the current is very uh, small. And you can think of it, for example, by assuming that this is a transmission line. And if you look at this side compared to the other side of the transmission line, they are not connected here. So you may think of them as open circuits. So you may expect that current will be very small. So V divided by I becomes very large. You get a very high value there. So it's not going to be matched with 50 ohms. So you upset it a little bit. To, uh, to have a better match. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of, of feeding is using inset. And for inset, essentially, you bring a 50 ohm transmission line. But if you, and this is a micro strip transmission line. So this is, again, the top view. So this is uh, the one conductor of the transmission line. The other conductor is essentially this um, uh, metallic ground plane on the back. So that's just one conductor. The other one is on the back. Now, uh, if you do it like that, the same problem happens. 50 ohm to a large impedance, that's going to create problems. So you do a thing similar to that. So you go inside. So you essentially make something like this. And then you go inside. So instead of feeding like this, you feed with a micro strip transmission line. And then you go inside, and this is an inset fed uh, micro strip antenna. Now, this is about uh, two mechanisms of feeding. The one that we have in this lab is actually none of them. In this lab, we don't want to have an inset, and we don't want to have this probe fed. So we keep our patch the same as before, and we keep our 50 ohm like that. So let me like plot it a little bit wider. So that's my 50 ohm. So that's a characteristic impedance of my uh, feeding line. Now, if I connect it directly to the, my patch, I'm going to have impedance mismatch. So what I'm going to do, and that's the way that LabWorld did for their micro strip antenna, they created something that we call quarter wavelength transformer. We had that in the course. So i like you to study that. So the length of this is quarter wavelengths. Which wavelengths? Wavelengths in the substrate. Now, this is a quarter wavelength. And to match 50 ohm to Z in, so this is Z in, the characteristic impedance of this line should be the geometrical mean of these two. It's not algebraic means, it's geometrical mean. So geometrical mean means a square root of 50 times Z in. So if I'm not mistaken, Z in in the antenna considered in this lab is about 120 ohm. This is 50. 
and the result is 78 ohm. So essentially, you need to have a quarter wavelength with 78 ohm of uh, width to, to match this to that. And the, the, the main thing here is that if you want 78 ohm, you, you achieve 78 ohm by controlling the widths of this transmission line. So as you see, if you make the widths narrower, you increasing its characteristic impedance. For example, we go from 50 to 78. So you see we increasing the characteristic impedance so the, the line becomes thinner. And this is could be one limitation because if Z in is too large, then you may end up with a very large value in a set of 78. And if it's become very large, it may end up very thin. And now you may end up to issues like fabrication tolerance and things like that. So now this is this would be what we have in this lab. And I want you to re, I want to remind you about the way that this antenna works. Uh, if you remember this is about half a wavelength. It's not exactly half a wavelength. Remember, we have the fringing effect and things like that in the course. Roughly half a wavelength, wavelengths being wavelengths in the substrate. And because it's a half a wavelength, what happens is that the fringing field here at the aperture of the two radiating edge are all in phase. So if you if you look at the direction of the electric field at one instant, they're all in phase. Now, if you consider this axis perpendicular and toward you, if you consider any point here, the distance to these apertures is exactly the same. The electric field over the aperture are also in phase. So in terms of distance, they're the same. In terms of uh, electric phase, they're also the same. So they're going to be add up constructively here. And therefore, you get your main beam toward you. So that's the direction of maximum radiation. Now, I could have uh, my coordinates, which is probably not matched with the lab world. But uh, it's, I mean, you, I just want you to get the picture here. So uh, what is my E plane? So you say, OK, the direction of maximum radiation is toward you. It is Z. The direction of electric field is E. So this is Z. This is E. So this plane is my E plane, which is X, Z. And what would be my H plane? H plane. So this is the direction of maximum radiation is the same. This was my E. This becomes my H. So this becomes my H plane, which is Y, Z plane. So my H plane is Y, Z plane. So of course, if I change the coordinate, for example, assume that this is Z, uh, then Y would be uh, toward you. Therefore, uh, therefore uh, these change. But you need to be careful which coordinate you're using. So that's essentially the mechanism that I have. And uh, we, in this lab, we're going to do the radiation pattern measurement in both E plane and H plane. I want you to think about this antenna and see which of these uh, patterns should be should have a narrower half power beam width. Judge it based on the size of the antenna in these two planes, and then try to predict that. And then we're going to see that in the lab. Uh, now, before going to the lab, let me show you the antenna. So this is the antenna that we are using in this in this lab. So let me start by saying this tiny thing that you see here. It's extremely tiny. It's just very thin. So from essentially here to here, extremely thin. This is uh, my dielectric substrate. It's extremely thin. This, this black thing here is essentially the support. But this is, is my dielectric substrate. If you look from the back through these holes, you see that in the back of this tiny uh, substrate, I have metal here. So in the, from the back, it ha I have a metallic ground plane. Now, this is, if I, if I show it from the top view, this is my SMA cable, so bringing the signal to the system. And this line here is my 50 ohm line. Now, when I go to a thinner line, this is my 78 ohm. This is my quarter wavelength transformer. So I go from 50 to 78. So this is my transformer transforming 50 to the input impedance of the patch, which is 120. So you can think of this as a transformer. Now, this is my patch. 
So I have two radiating um, edge. So one of them, this is the one, the first one. This is the second one. And the electric field over the patch are just in this direction. So this is one radiating edge. This is the other radiating edge and the direction of electric field is in this direction. So, uh, so this is essentially my antenna. So if you look at this, this is the true thickness of this antenna from here, just a little bit down is mm -hmm. here. So, so, uh, so they're very thin. So that's in one dimension, you're essentially are extremely thin. And that's really the advantage of this type of antenna. So again, summary, SMA cable, 50 ohm, 78 ohm transformer, and the patch itself. So, and this is the size, the main size of the patch that's very important for us, which is about half a wavelength in the dielectric substrate. This is not exactly the case because of the fringing effect, but this is roughly the case. Okay, now let's go and start our measurements. Okay, before starting our micro strip antenna measurements, I've mounted the larger horn antenna and the smaller horn antenna that we measured in a previous lab uh, for the purpose of gain measurements of micro strip antenna. So you remember that if you wanted to measure the gain of an antenna, in our case right now, micro strip antenna, one way is to do comparison gain measurement. So to do comparison gain measurement, we need to have a standard gain. Now, our measurement is done at 10.52 gigahertz, so our standard gain, we need to know it at 10.52 gigahertz. Now, in a previous lab, we made the smaller horn antenna a standard gain at 10.52 gigahertz. We calculated its gain. To remind you, we essentially used the two antenna method so we had two identical antenna, this one and this one, two identical antenna method. We calculated the gain of this one, and then we used that to calculate the gain of the smaller horn antenna. So that's, I mean, you could do it in various ways. That was the way that was done in a previous lab. Now we know the gain of this antenna. In fact, you have calculated the gain of the smaller gain a smaller horn antenna in a previous lab. So that's your standard gain. Now, what I'm gonna do is that according to the student manual, I separated these two to 1.5 meter, aperture to aperture. Now I'm gonna record the MSL for, these, for this antenna. So as soon as I record the MSL, you have a maximum signal level MSL, and you know that that corresponds to the gain of this antenna. You already know the gain. Now, I, now I'm going to put micro strip antenna. And for micro strip antenna, given the same distance, I'm going to get a different MSL. So you would say essentially for the MSL that I measured for the horn, this was the gain. Now I have a new MSL for micro strip antenna. What should be the gain? And then you calculate the gain of the micro strip antenna. So to do that, I'm going to start performing my measurement. I'm going to start the power. If you look at the uh, cables in this case, the way that they're feeding the waveguide adapter, uh, the, it's vertically polarized. And uh, if you uh, uh, look at the previous uh, talk about measuring the horn antenna, you realize that in this case, we are measuring H plane of the horn antenna. So it's very both vertically polarized. So it's essentially copole and it's also H plane. So now I'm gonna start my measurements and uh, see what I'm gonna get. So in this case, as you see, the antenna is rotating and uh, I, I just essentially need to wait for the antenna to rotate 360 degree then I'm gonna have is H plane pattern. So uh, if, we, if I wanted to save some time, I really, for gain measurements for the, uh, I don't really needed to uh, record the pattern of this antenna, this in full 360 degree. I could also adjust my antenna so that it, ha it has the maximum signal level. I know that if they're looking toward each other, they have the maximum signal level, and I just record one point. But just uh, to, because I had the time, I, I'm going to collect the whole pattern. But usually for a standard gain, you don't need to 
get the whole pattern. Now this is done and I can now go and have my micro strip antenna mounted. Okay, we have now mounted the uh, horn antenna, a smaller horn antenna. You already know the standard, uh, you already know the gain of this antenna at the frequency of operation 10.52 gigahertz. It's in the H plane. Uh, the polarization is matched with the transmitting antenna, which is the larger horn and uh, we applied 18 db of attenuation in the software so i'm gonna start the acquisition right now we are in the main lobe so now the antenna is rotating to the angle 90 degree with respect to the transmitting antenna now we are approaching the back lobe so so as i mentioned because the, we are going to use that as the gain reference what matters for us is the maximum signal level essentially uh, the uh, the other ones are not very important for us uh, for the purpose of gain measurements because in the gain measurements we are corresponding the maximum signal level of this antenna to the gain of this antenna so now this is done this is my gain so it's H plane so I'm just going to use H plane and I'm going to be saving this right now okay now what what other thing I could do is to have the MSL position at zero which is already it is at zero so now if you look at the right column you see that the maximum signal level is minus 3.39 and the half power beam width is 38.92 so what what what's important here for us is that we say okay for the maximum signal level of minus 3.39 we know that this is the gain so now uh, you might say why did you do H plane measurement why not E plane so you we could essentially do E plane too uh, and you know that theoretically the maximum signal level of E plane and H plane should match so if I do E plane that would be uh, that theoretically need to be the same but you know that sometimes we don't get exactly the same thing now in situations like that we need to judge which one we trust more okay we now gonna focus on our micro strip antenna as you see we have mounted our micro strip antenna on the receiver mast so i'm just getting a little bit close to that so that you can see so this is the micro strip antenna mounted here so so if you uh, if you look at the radiating edges of the micro strip you you realize that right now the electric field is essentially perpendicular uh, is, is vertically polarized excuse me so it's vertically polarized so essentially the transmit antenna should also be vertically polarized so that it creates polarization match when you are measuring the other thing to note here is that when it rotates i can go away so that you can see the axis of rotation to when it rotates uh, you are essentially moving in the H plane. So if you mount the antenna like that and you start rotating the antenna, what you measure is essentially H plane. So that would be our first measurement. We mount the antenna for the H plane cut measurements. And then after that, we make sure that because in, the, in this configuration, the polarization is vertically polarized, we make sure that our transmit antenna is also vertically polarized. I can show the transmit antenna here too. So if you look at the waveguide adapter, you realize that this is essentially vertically polarized right now. So, so this is gonna illuminate with vertical polarization. Then I'm gonna receive by my micro strip antenna. And of course, micro strip antenna is gonna rotate. So so now I can start the acquisition by starting the RF power. So now the RF power is on and I'm going to start the acquisition 
and then you can see a little bit of rotation for this micro strip antenna. So I can just get closer to this so that you can see it. So it's rotating. So if, I mean, I used a couple of things to mount it on the, uh, on the uh, receiver mast. You can check that later on in the student user manual. So, so as you see, you have your rotation and you just need to make sure that uh, the antenna is aligned with the axis of rotation. I mean, here I probably should have used a, a smaller cable uh, because that's too long. And as you see, it's not ideal in this case. The reason I chose the same cable was that this was the cable I used for my standard game. So I wanted to keep it identical so that uh, any loss would be uh, exactly the same. But uh, as you see, this cable is not in an ideal situation, but you get the main idea of our measurement. Okay, we have now mounted our micro strip antenna in the H-plane configuration. Uh, the transmit antenna is copoled, and we're gonna uh, start performing our measurements. So, uh, so you see, we have, we have a little bit of ripples in the pattern. So ideally, we wanna investigate what is the source of those, and we eliminate them. Uh, but here, if they're not too bad, I'm just going to assume that's acceptable and I'm going to carry on. But ideally, I mean, you don't want to have those ripples. Maybe you need to look into cables, uh, any vibrations, uh, absorbers, and things like that. So remember that the previous pattern that we have on the screen is for a small horn antenna. Uh, we set up the maximum signal level to be at zero, so I, we need to do the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to just bring the maximum signal level for this antenna also to zero. So that's, uh, that's essentially or our uh, uh, horn antenna in the H-plane. The pattern is not perfect as you see we have ripples and things like that. And uh, the other thing that you uh, should notice here is the half power beam widths. Uh, here we get in from the measurement uh, 72.89 half power beam widths. I want you to uh, compare it with what you expect uh, theoretically. Is the theoretical value uh, smaller than this or larger than this? So this is something that you can compare. The maximum signal level that we got is minus 9.89. So it's about 6 dB less than the maximum signal level of horn antenna. So for horn antenna, you know your maximum signal level, which is minus 3.39. Uh, for this new antenna, you also know minus 9.89. What you don't know is the gain of this antenna, but you know the gain of the horn antenna. So from this mechanism, you could calculate, uh, you should calculate the gain of this patch. So uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna leave it to you to perform calculation of the gain. Okay, now as you see, I rotated our patch antenna so that I can measure. E plane of this antenna. So the previous measurement was H plane. So if I get closer to this antenna, you will see that I have a SMA cable going to 50 ohm and then going to the transformer, quarter wave transformer, and then gets to the patch. And this is essentially the system that I have. Now, when it rotates, I'd like you to explain for yourself why this is E plane. The other thing that I like you to think about that is that based on this excitation that I have, the polarization in this case is horizontal polarization. So, uh, so if it's horizontal polarization, I need to make sure that my transmitting antenna 
is also horizontally polarized. So now if I get to this point, and if, if you compare it to the previous measurement, you see that I also rotated the uh, horn antenna 90 degree so that this is also uh, horizontally polarized. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the measurement so that you see the rotation of the antenna under test. So let me press the RF power. So you, you hear the RF power. Now I'm going to go to the system and I'm going to press the data collection button so that you can see what would be the measurement. So let me, so now you will see the rotation of the system. So if you also pay close attention, you'll see that my alignment is not perfect in this case. So I should have done a better job. Uh, the, what I'm saying is that patch antenna itself is not 100% aligned with the axis of rotation. So if it comes back here, you can see uh, which axis you're rotating, and you can also look at your patch antenna. Again, we also have the problem with the cable. The cable is, uh, is also having effect on the measurement. So this is what I'm saying. If you look at the axis of rotation in this case, and you look at the patch antenna, you want them to be uh, along each other which is not 100% the case here. Uh, so anyways, let's go and look at our E-plane measurement. Let's start doing the E-plane measurements of this antenna. So uh, for the E-plane, uh, you've seen that we rotated the antenna 90 degree and we also rotated the transmitting antenna 90 degree to have our polarization match. So this is the H-plane of the small horn antenna. This is the H-plane of our um, micro strip antenna. And now we're going to do the E-plane of micro strip antenna. So I'm just going to press a start acquisition. And you're going to be getting the E-plane of this patch antenna. So what we're going to, similar to our other thing, what we want to first check would be if the maximum signal level of the two antennas are relatively close to each other. That would be one thing that we're going to check. So this is almost done. And what remains for me to do is to essentially make sure that I'm consistent. So I'm just going to rotate it so that the maximum signal level at zero. So this would be my pattern. So again, this one here is for a smaller horn. This one here is for H plane of the patch antenna. And this one here would be for uh, the E plane of the patch antenna. So, I mean, I, uh, can improve this pattern, but uh, I'm going to keep it for now. Uh, but what I want to emphasize here is the maximum signal level. So if you look at your maximum signal level in the H plane, it was minus 9.89. In the E plane, it is minus 9.75. So although we have ripples and some uh, scattering effects in our pattern, at least in terms of maximum signal level, we are consistent. So uh, the other thing you want to notice here is that the half power beam width of H plane that we got through this measurement is about 72.89. Uh, for the E plane, it has been increased to 85.39. Now I'd like you to uh, tell me if that makes sense. Do you expect a larger half power beam width of for the E plane as compared to H plane. If you expect that, why do you expect that? So, uh, so this is right now the pattern of these two antennas, 
and we can go to the next step. In this part of the lab, we're going to check if we increase the lengths or widths of the patch, what would be the effect. So to review our patch, this is the patch that we have. This is the quarter wavelength transformer. This is the 50 ohm. So this is our 50 ohm. This is our 78 ohm quarter wavelength transformer. And this is the length of our patch, which is about lambda in dielectric divided by two. Again, this is approximate because we have fringing effects and so on. And this is the width, uh, the width of the patch that we have. Now, in the first part of the lab, what we're going to do, we're going to attach ad adhesive copper tape to this so that we increase the size of the patch from this side. So as you see, if I, if I do that, then what's going to happen is that th this lengths that I have would be affected. Now, the lengths of the patch would be the original one plus the, the width of the adhesive copper tape. Now, we, we're going to see how our H-plane data acquisition will change based on this. Next time, what we're going to do, we're going to have our adhesive copper tape on, the, on this side. But uh, we're going to start first with that and, and look at the effect. So again, to remind you, uh, the way that this radiates is by, by having in-phase electric field on both sides due to fringing effects. So as soon as you do that, then you would ask yourself, what's going to happen to this fringing effect? Because the, the, this, the similar set to this one existed right at the point that we put the copper tape. Now, this is what we you need to discuss. The other thing here is that we put the adhesive copper tape only on one side, not on this side. And the main reason for that is that if I put it on this side as well, then this lambda divided by four is not lambda by divided by four anymore. Therefore, you don't have a proper transformer. So we only put it on one side. So let's go and check our experimental setup and start our experiment. Okay, let's start by checking where we place the adhesive copper tape. So if you look at this patch antenna, this is the original patch antenna. So if I start from the bottom, you see the 50 ohm, then 50 ohm transmission line goes to 78 ohm quarter wavelength transformer. Then I go to the patch. Now, this was the original one that we measured and to perform H-plane measurement, we mounted the antenna like that, and it was rotating like this. Now, let's go and look at the new antenna that we have. So if you look closely at the top of this antenna, you see that I've placed the copper tape on the top. So now the length of the antenna has been increased. So in this uh, orientation, I can say the height of the antenna has been increased. And now we're going to investigate what would be the effect of that. So I can also place the original antenna just beside it so that you can compare that the adhesive copper tape is now uh, used to increase the height of the antenna. So that's our configuration. Now we're going to we're going to start performing the measurements in the H-plane. So I'm just going to go a little bit farther so that you can see the placement of the antenna. If you remember our original discussion, you know that this antenna, based on the electric field at the aperture, uh, uh, radiating aperture, is now vertically polarized. So therefore, the horn antenna that's transmitting is also vertically polarized right now. So this is our horn antenna that transmitting. That's also vertically polarized. And now we can start the measurements and compare it with, this, with the case that there was no adhesive copper. OK, let's uh, check what we have so far. We have the H plane of our standard gain, which was the smaller horn antenna. We made it the standard gain. This is the H plane of the patch. 
this is the E plane of the patch. Now here I'm going to focus on only the H plane of the patch. So I'm going to hide the standard gain and E plane of the patch and just focus on the H plane of the patch. As you notice, we increase the length of the patch uh, by adhesive copper tape. Now we want to see what's going to be the effect of that. So let's uh, start the measurements. I'm now uh, starting the measurements. So right here, you see one effect and it's not completely done yet, but you see that the main effect is essentially signal drop. So if I now we go, of course, to the back lobes. And by the way, regarding back lobe, remember if the ground plane is infinite, uh, essentially that's comp it's going to completely block it. But then of course, in our practical cases, ground plane is not infinite, so you still get your back radiation. And now we again come to the front lobe. And if we look at our front lobe right now, we see that we have signal drop. Now, let me save that under uh, H plane of document one. So it is now saved. And I need to do one more thing to complete my uh, discussion here. We always rotated the maximum signal level so that the maximum is at zero. So I, I did the same thing here. So now I have, this is the H plane of the original patch. This is the H plane of the patch where we increase the length of the patch. Remember that we have not changed the frequency of operation. We are still at 10.52 gigahertz. And by increasing the length of the patch a little bit, what happened is that we have some signal drop. And the signal drop that we have, if you compare minus 9.89 for the original patch and minus 13.89 for the patch whose length has been extended is uh, minus 13.89. The difference is 4 dB drop. So, uh, so now my question for you, which is essentially the question of lab vault student manual for you, is that could you justify what is the reason that we have this drop of the signal? So this is you, what you need to address. Okay, we just finished performing this experiment where we extended the length of the patch. So what we're going to do right now is, is are we going to remove this copper tape? So I already removed that. And this part, if you remember, we didn't do anything. It was just for me explaining why we're not doing anything on this side. So let me have that again. So, so this was the length. So in the previous case, we increased the lengths. And now in the new one, we're going to increase the widths. So this is the, the original widths of the patch. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to have copper tape here and here to increase the widths of the patch. And then we're going to see what would be the effect of that. So here, you remember that in the previous case, we couldn't put copper tape here because the length of the transformer is lambda by four. So if I put anything here, I'm going to change my transformer. But in the widths, we could do it. We could put one here and one here and nothing stops us from doing that. So let's do that and see what would be the effect of this. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, I removed the copper tape from uh, the top of the patch that we had before. So you remember we had a copper tape on, on the top side of this patch. I removed that. And as you see, I have now two side copper tape. And I wasn't very careful with them. You see the sizes are different and uh, it, they're not in uh, very symmetric. But in any case, I think that essentially going to show what would be the effect of increasing the width of the patch. So let's go and start our measurement and see what's going to happen. Remember that the polarization 
of this antenna is still vertically polarized and we are still on the H plane. The only thing here is that we increase the width of the pattern. Okay, right now we have two patterns on the screen. This is the H plane of the original patch. This was the H plane of the patch where we increase the length of the patch and we observed about 4 dB signal attenuation. Now what we've done, we removed that copper uh, tape that extended the length of the patch and instead we added two other copper tape to increase the width of the patch as explained in the previous uh, video. So now we're going to do an H-plane acquisition of this case. So let's uh, start our data acquisition. So as you see uh, in this case, it seems we started from a very similar uh, signal level to the original patch. So the main purpose here is to investigate if we increase the width of the patch slightly, what's going to happen to the radiation pattern. So this is what you need to uh, explain in your report. So I'm just going to wait until uh, the data acquisition is complete. And when it's complete, we're going to be consistent with the rest of the a radiation pattern we're going to rotate the pattern so that the maximum signal level is at zero degrees so it is done so let me store this okay it's now stored and i'm just going to move it to zero degree so now this is my maximum signal level right now so let's let's take a look so this was the original patch this was the thing that we just measured now uh, so if you look at the overall pattern shape they're very similar uh, and i have about 1 db increase uh, in this new case uh, the original patch maximum signal level was minus 9.89 the maximum signal level that we have right now is minus 8.8 .8. so uh, so one thing i i, I want to make it clear here is that these two measurements the original patch and the one that we did right now wasn't performed exactly at uh, in the same configuration for example i did uh, the original patch a couple days ago and a couple of things could be a slightly different for example distance of the patch to the transmitting antenna placement of the absorber how aligned is the micro strip antenna with the uh, with the axis of rotation and things like that so uh, so i don't want to uh, pay too much attention to this 1 db difference instead the main message here is that when we increase the lengths we clearly saw a signal drop but where we increase the width the pattern didn't change much now this uh, this is what you need to discuss in your report that why in one case we have significant uh, drop in the signal level in the other case we don't have a much difference so uh, so that's uh, that would be the topic that you need to address in this part of the lab we're going to be focusing on radome so radome is a term that consists of radar plus dome so essentially when you have an antenna sometimes you want to protect your antenna against uh, different weather conditions like a snow ice uh, rain and these type of thing or in other application you may even want to conceal your antenna so if you have a patch antenna like that this is essentially now completely exposed to weather and uh, in in this part of the lab lab vault has a plexiglass like this that you can think of it as the radome for this antenna so if i have this uh, patch antenna behind this plexiglass this plexiglass essentially is gonna protect your 
uh, antenna. So in practice, when you place the material like this in the vicinity of the antenna, it's going to affect the radiation. So and the effect could be both on the radiation pattern. For example, the gain of the antenna might be reduced. The side lobe level may be increased or the input impedance of the antenna may, may change and if, if and that essentially could essentially shift the resonance frequency of your antenna so ideally this needs to create minimal change on the antenna so uh, ideally it needs to be transparent but of course it is not for example in this case this plexiglass that we have at the frequency of operation which is close to 10 gigahertz has a permittivity of 2.59 so uh, this is like that is working in the vicinity of air now if i put that now it's working in the vicinity of 2.59 so that's going to have some effect and remember that these are in the near field of the antenna so so it uh, it's going to have their own effect now uh, so but if you want to design it you need to design ray domes in conjunction with your antenna design so uh, if it's not possible then you need to design radomes that doesn't affect the performance of your antenna much so in this lab we're going to investigate this a little bit and this particular thing that i have is a plexiglass radome and it has a thickness of about six millimeter so you can uh, you can actually calculate its thickness in terms of wavelengths so if you want to calculate that you can first calculate the wavelengths in the plexiglass so you have your plexiglass so that would be velocity of light divided by the frequency of operation divided by a square root of uh, relative permittivity which would be 3 10 to the power of 8 frequency is 10.52 gigahertz and uh, epsilon r is 2.59 at this frequency of operation and then you can calculate that and then later on you can check that six millimeter thickness is uh, uh, correspond to what sort of wavelengths uh, what sort of ratio of wavelengths so you can you can calculate that for yourself so let's go and check what would be the effect of our uh, plexiglass radome on the performance of the patch antenna and we're going to also focus on the h plane in this part of the lab as well Okay, now we're going to start performing uh, measurements uh, in the presence of a radome. Uh, the, the only thing here is that to do that, I needed to have two masts, as you see, one mast for the patch antenna, and the other mast that right now I don't have anything is essentially later on for radome. I can just place the radome here, and you'll see... This is going to be later on as my radome. So because of that, I have a situation that my antenna cannot be aligned properly with the axis of rotation, which is this is the axis of rotation, essentially. So I, I mounted the antenna farther. So uh, that's an issue with performing pattern measurements. So what I'm going to do I'm going to just perform one measurement in this situation within the radome and consider that as the uh, pattern of the patch antenna. So, uh, so and you, here you can easily see that the axis of rotation, which is here, is not aligned with the patch antenna. So that's why uh, I, I decided to do another patch radiation pattern so you have it under this situation once this is done i'm going to place the uh, the plexiglass and i'm going to perform another measurement so that you can see the effect of the plexiglass and i'm just going to also keep the mast of uh, the plexiglass in front of the antenna to have its effect in the radiation pattern of the patch and later on, the only thing would be added would be the plexiglass 
radon. Okay, as mentioned earlier, we have our patch antenna and we also have the mast for the plexiglass sheet, but we don't have the plexiglass sheet just yet. We just have the mast in front of the antenna. So the effect of the mast is present, but the effect of plexiglass is not present. Uh, also remember that the patch antenna is not properly aligned. We have it uh, far from, relatively far from the axis. So it's not a proper H plane data acquisition. We just have it as a reference to see what's going to happen if we put the plexiglass sheet in front of it. So let's start our measurement and see what sort of radiation pattern we get in the absence of the plexiglass sheet. One thing before I start, before I start my measurement, in the previous measurements, uh, we had 18 dB of attenuation in the right column. Now I decrease it to 11 because in the previous time we were comparing to open-ended, uh, sorry, we were comparing to a smaller horn antenna uh, as the standard gain. And to, so a standard gain was also present in our measurements. So I had 18 dB so that we can properly capture the radiation pattern of a horn antenna as well. But now that we don't have a horn antenna anymore, I, I decrease the attenuation to 11 so that I get a stronger uh, maximum signal level or MSL. So let's uh, start it. So right away, you see that MSL starts higher than the previous case that we had 18 dB attenuation. And now you're, uh, you're essentially collecting the H plane with a couple of notes that I added that the antenna is not properly aligned. And also we have the mast of the plexiglass uh, sheet. The plexiglass itself is absent, but its mast is present. And this is my H plane pattern under this situation. Now I just completed the back radiation of the antenna and we are completing the front lobe. And this is essentially our reference. Now I'm gonna store this under H plane. And what you could do you could also make sure that the MSL is at zero. So it, we can rotate a little bit. But the most important thing here is to notice that the maximum signal level is minus 3.65. Now, in the next step, I'm going to go and place the plexiglass sheet in front of the antenna. And then we're going to compare it with this radiation pattern that we just got. Okay, we have now completed perform, uh, performing H-plane measurements. When we have the patch and the mast of the plexiglass sheet, but without the plexiglass sheet. So what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm gonna take the plexiglass sheet and I'm gonna place it in front of the antenna like this. And then I'm gonna tighten it so that it doesn't move much. Okay, so that's, that's essentially, I have now a plexiglass sheet, a dielectric with a certain thickness in front of the patch. Uh, so it's not touching the patch right now. I have some distance right now. I don't know exactly. I just chose it randomly. But if I want to give you a rough idea, the distance is about 2.5 centimeter. So I have about 2.5 centimeter distance between patch and uh, the dielectric material. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna start our data collection. So I'm gonna turn on the RF power and I'm gonna press the data acquisition so that you see how the whole thing rotate and we perform our data collection. So this is, of course, the back uh, lobes of the patch antenna. The ground plane is not infinite, so you always get your back lobes. And you can see easily the separation between the patch and uh, your plexiglass sheet. 
Now, uh, in this configuration that we have right now, anything that's going to be received by the patch needs to go through the uh, plexiglass. So this is our transmit antenna here too. So you can look at the transmit antenna that we have. Okay, we have now the H plane of our patch antenna under those comments that I mentioned earlier regarding access of rotation and so on. Uh, this is our reference. Now I have the plexiglass sheet uh, in front of the patch and this is about 2.5 centimeter away from the patch and I'm going to perform another data acquisition. So, so, as you probably have guessed by the trend of the pattern, it has been, the pattern becomes a little bit more directive. So, uh, also we get some uh, more uh, back lobes, uh, stronger back lobes in this uh, new case. So, Let's uh, see for the pattern data collection to be completed and then we can uh, talk a, a little bit more about this pattern that we got. Okay, so now the pattern has been done. I'm going to store it under a new uh, document. So let me complete my data acquisition and I'm going to also rotate the antenna such that rotate the pattern such that the maximum signal level is at zero degree so now if we compare our original pattern that we got it has less back lobes less uh, uh, a strong back lobes but then the new one if you look at the front in terms of we got a little about 2 dB a stronger MSL. So the MSL for the uh, with the, in the absence of the plexiglass was minus 3.65. In the presence of the plexiglass, it becomes about minus 1.6. So it's a 2 dB increase in this case, but. Uh, if you look at the back lobes, it has some effects on the back lobes. So, can, do you think that makes sense? So, can you can you explain if our result makes sense? If it makes sense, why? If it does not make sense, why? So now let's go and do another measurement. In the next experiments, we have increased the distance between the plexiglass and patch antenna to about 5.5 centimeter. So if I go to the side, you can better see the separation between these two. So uh, so if you look at from front, front to, you can also see your plexiglass sheet. Now we're going to perform another measurement using this larger distance and check what would be the final result okay so we had originally this as the pattern of our patch then we had the plexiglass sheet uh, if i'm not mistaken the distance was 2.5 centimeter you can check the previous video and this became our pattern so we got uh, some uh, strong back lobes and also we got a, a more signal in the front now we've increased the distance between the plexiglass sheet and the patch antenna to 5.5 centimeter and perform another data collection so let's start so it seems that the signal has dropped right now but then again in the back we get lots of radiation it seems so now what I would like to ask you is to discuss this result I mean does this make sense uh, if it makes sense 
why it makes sense and if it doesn't make sense why it doesn't make sense so in particular uh, why we have these strong back lobes and also why our signal level has dropped so that's uh, that's would be uh, two things to discuss in this case so I can just uh, store this under a new document so yeah that's uh, that's essentially the main point if you look at the signal levels that we have uh, clearly when we increase the distance the signal level dropped but when the distance was closer the signal level was actually enhanced but in both cases we got uh, more back radiation compared to our patch antenna so please discuss these results and uh, uh, see, say if it makes sense or not if it if it does or it doesn't give your uh, explanations